In the previous video, we were looking at uh, how to use a vertex form in order to help us to solve quadratics. So here we had looked at an example of uh, something that was already given in vertex form. And then we were able to actually go through and solve and figure out where the vertex was and also where the x-intercepts were, which means that uh, then we could actually graph it like this. Now, what do we do though if we're not given vertex form? In other words, if it's not in this nice form here, but instead if it's in general form, which is like ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's uh, the question right here. So how to get from general form to vertex form? And uh, the way to do that is of course to do completing the square. Now some students uh, really don't like this method, but I think it's totally doable. It's just a matter of using a few tricks here. So completing the square. This is what we have to do to complete the square. I'm going to write down some steps and they may not make much sense, but in a second right here, I'm going to show you with an example. So the steps to completing the square. Well, step one is to take out any common factors. So take out common factors, but not of the whole, um, not of the whole quadratic, but just common factors of uh, x and x squared. Okay, so take out common factors of x squared and x. Step two, um, I like to say to put parentheses. So put parentheses. Um, because around the x squared and x terms. So around the x squared and x terms. This may not make any sense for right now, but just bear with me. This will be important because then I can use these here. Here comes the weird part now. We have to divide the x term by 2 and then square it. This is actually why we call it completing the square. Okay, so this is actually the important part here. This is the sort of weird part, is doing this. It may seem to just be something totally arbitrary, but it won't. You'll see that in a second here. So add and subtract that value. And finally, step five. Um, how should I say? Actually, I could say uh, we rearrange and then factor. So this may not make much sense at the moment. So let me show you with an example. And this at least will have some context here. So this is the goal. We've got something given in general form. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. So a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 1. So how do I convert to vertex form? Well, step 1 will be to just follow my own steps here. So step one, take out common factors of x squared and x. The good news is uh, there's nothing to do here, but I, here I would look and try to take out a number that's common to the x squared and to the x. At the moment, there's nothing common to them other than a one, so step one is easy. Step two, put parentheses around the x squared and the x terms. So I'll do that. So that means I'm just going to write it like this. So y equals x squared, and this may sound totally ridiculous, but just bear with me here, so minus 4x, I'm going to actually also add a big space here. I'll show you why in a second. And then I do plus 1. So I haven't really done anything exciting except for put parentheses here, but I'm going to need some space, because this uh, is what we do with completing the square here. Now remember, anything you do to an equation, you either have to do to both sides, or you have to do something that's equivalent to doing nothing. In other words, in this equation right here, I could add 20,000 and then I could subtract 20,000. As long as I added and subtracted the same number, um, I haven't changed my equation. If I want to add something only on one side, then I would have to add it on the other side. But in this case, we're going to do something that seems a bit dodgy, uh, but there's a really good reason for it. So I'll show you this now. So the next step says to divide the x term by 2. So I'm going to do that right now. So negative 4, this is the x term, so to speak. So I'm going to divide that by 2. So negative 4 divided by 2, that gives me negative 2. Now I'm going to take that number. So that's what negative 4 over 2 is. I'm going to take that number and square it. So squaring negative 2, 
So negative two times negative two gives me four. Okay, so now I've found that value, so to speak. So I'm, I'm finished this. Now I'm supposed to add and subtract that value. So what I'm going to do then, uh, maybe I'll do this on another, st uh, another step just to make it a little bit more clear. So x squared minus four x, that's what I originally started with. And then I had a plus one. So what I'll do then is add that four and I'm going to subtract that four. The reason I do that is because, well, I, I want this to be equivalent to doing nothing. See, plus four minus four is actually zero. But if I keep the plus four, see, the idea is to keep the plus four and then just ditch this over somewhere else. And the reason we do this is we're going to make a small quadratic here that factors, something that we can actually factor. And it turns out that that's the goal. So what I'm going to do then is, well, I've added and subtracted that value. So there it is. Now I want to rearrange, then factor. So I'll show you that last step now. So what I want to do now, I'm going to rearrange, and the goal is to just get rid of that extra minus 4. Now, I'm not just going to say 4 minus 4 equals 0, because that would be counterproductive. I'd end up back where I started. right? I'd end up back up here. What I'm going to do is kick out this minus 4 out of the parentheses. Now normally, if there's a number in front, I'd have to multiply that by this to get out. But in this case, I can just move my minus 4 out. In other words, I can take this one and just push it out of the parentheses. And the reason we do this is because this right here is something that we call a perfect square. Um, well, it's something that actually it, it factors nicely. In fact, it factors easily. And a nice trick is that um, if you look at this right here and, and ask yourself, can it be factored? It can. And the reason why I kept this notation right here is because, do you see this minus 2 right here? That's what this will be. It'll be x minus 2, all that squared. It turns out that this is the same thing as this. Okay, so this right here, x squared minus 4x plus 4, it turns out it factors to x minus 2. If you're not sure, you can always just multiply x minus 2 times x minus 2 and expand it out, and it turns out you'll get x squared minus 4x plus 4. So this is something really handy. Now the thing is, we have a bunch of other junk left over on the right, so we're just going to deal with that. So minus 4 plus 1, that's minus 3. I'm done. This is in vertex form. Now why did we bother doing this? That's because remember this is, makes it think uh, this makes it really easy to take a look at what the graph looks like. See, just from this, I can tell right away that the vertex. If you remember before, the vertex is always. You know, I'll go back to the last uh, thing we were looking at before. The vertex is h comma k in a vertex form. So, the vertex of this one is two comma negative three. So now I know where my vertex is. And if I wanted to, I can even um, use algebra then to figure out what the roots are. In other words, I could do like what we did in the last example and actually work out what the roots are just by setting y equal to 0 and then just propagating that all the way through. So that's the goal with doing vertex form, or at least with completing the square, is to take something that starts in general form and bring it to vertex form. Now, some students find this very tedious, uh, but it is one of the ways of solving quadratics. It is a useful tool. I personally don't use it as often, but I think it's helpful to know where it came from because this allows you algebraically to solve um, a quadratic. In other words, you can actually get the answer to any quadratic, whether it factors or not, by this method here.